Dustin Weinkoff here, product specialist with Agland. Today we're going to go through our product support video for our C-Series air carts. Going through our air cart navigation on our air cart main page, one thing to note, anything with an up arrow is advanced setup. In our meter setup, this here is where we can select our tanks, our product, whether it be seed or a fertilizer. The type and our color of meter roller. Calibrations and our variable rate. In C-Series air cart, this is where you will enter your desired rate for each meter. Under our cart setup, our cart size, we have a height sensor or switch, section command, and cart brakes. Under our tool, our tool type, our width, row spacing, and our adjusted width. Do note that if you have a 57 foot machine, you will need to have 10 runs on T6 and B6. Under our sensor, height sensor, tire speed. If our air cart speed does not match our tractor GPS speed, we must change our tire calibration value. We need to make sure that those two numbers are the same or we will notice an inaccuracy in our rates being applied. Tank scales, and here, this is where we can calibrate our tank scales. Please make a note, do not calibrate the scales to zero unless the tanks are completely empty. Select the calibration button and which tanks you would like to calibrate. Hit save. Tank pressurization, in here, this is where we can zero our tank pressurization valves. Make sure to do this when your fans are not running. And again, height sensor. Under our totals, here is where we can see different totals. Maybe we use these as our field totals here. This here is our season total. And down here is the lifetime hours and acres of our cart. To turn on or turn off any of our counters, put a checkbox in and to zero them out, use the corresponding zero. We then have our meter totals here that we can zero out at any time and the cal flow calculator. Under our alarm setup, this is where we enter our low tank warning alarms for each tank. In a C-Series air cart, you have three options. Tank scale, bin level with your optical sensor or area to empty. Area to empty uses the weight in the tank and the rate being applied to figure out how many acres to empty. Bin level uses the ultrasonic sensors and tank scale you can enter a desired weight at which time you want the tank alarm to come off. You can set these individually for each of the four tanks. Under our diagnostics, readings, we have different diagnostic readings for systems on the cart. Under tests, this is where we will do our meter verification, our hydraulic system maintenance, and our individual section test. Meter verification screen looks like this, and our section tests like so. System maintenance, this is where we would do any hydraulic maintenance and meter flushes. Back on our air cart main page, if we click on our air cart, here in the information we can see our tank pressurization gauges here, acres to empty based off our tank scales, and this icon here we can select our tanks, enter a desired amount of acres, 
and it will tell us how many pounds to load to run empty for that amount of acres. If you hit accept, your tank lights will flash when the desired reading is met. Here we can set our fan low speed alarms for our top fan and bottom fan, our clutch on and off, speed or other selectables, and our cart braking. If you activate your cart brakes from the display, it will activate your cart brakes independently of your tractor and you can do this until the green bar disappears. Next we're going to set up our equipment. From the Gen 4 display we'll go to set up in the bottom left hand corner, select equipment, our tractor and make sure that the proper offsets are entered for the tractor that we're using. Next we will go to air cart and here we will see that the tractor knows we are connected to a tow between air cart. Connection type, we want to make sure that our measurements are entered properly. Here center of rotation will be measured from the center of the tractor pin to the center of the rear wheels on the cart and the rear connection point will be measured from the center of the front hitch pin to the center of the rear hitch pin. We recommend that you each measure your own carts as measurements can vary. Scrolling down for the tool we see the center of rotation. Center of rotation on an 1870 will be from the center of the hitch pin to the center of our main frame wheels. Next our work points here. Work point is measured from the center of your hitch pin to the very last working rank. If you are running an 1895 or 1835, your separate fertilizer openers will have different measurements than your seed boots. Please take note of which tanks are going to which openers. Here we can enter that measurement. Moving down we have our mechanical delay times for section command. Now we're going to set up our documentation. First, in our air cart, we want to make sure that each tank is configured properly with the proper product. Once that is set, make sure you cycle your key power to bring over any product changes from seed to, fertil from seed to fertilizer. Next, we will go to set up in the bottom left hand corner and under work summary, we will see each tank here. Make sure that you select each tank planting or seeding, your crop type, and your variety. If you don't see your variety listed here, you can manually add it or send it in a setup file from the My John Deere Operation Center. Fertilizer, product application, product name, if you don't see it here, can manually enter it or again have it sent out in a setup file from the My John Deere Operation Center. With a Gen 4 display, if you have multiple tanks applying the same product, we need to set our tank configuration. We go to our equipment, back to our air cart, tank configuration. Here we can see individual applying different products from different tanks, alternating the same product but switching between tanks as they run empty or merged, applying the same products from multiple tanks at the same time. In this case we are going to be merging our tanks, our mini and our front, no prescription, hit save, you will now see your documentation looks like this. Here is our relative flow blockage home run page. Here we can see each of our towers, top shoot and bottom shoot, select them and then see the secondary towers within. While we are seeding we will see them lit up to the corresponding colors here for what is being seen. As we're seeding we will see the bars change here as the flow across that tower changes 
and the black bar around each tower change in relationship to its neighbors. In our advanced settings, here we can change our sensitivity for our top shoot and bottom shoot. For example, for canola, we may want to change our sensitivity. Under advanced settings, here is where our meter on and meter off delay can be set. When a section is commanded off or a meter is turned off, this is the amount of seconds before blockage will start looking for a block. If you have any sensors that are giving you an issue and you wish to mute them, touch them and they will then go to a checkerboard pattern. To turn them back on, touch them again. Next we're going to talk about setting up our section command. For those of you that haven't done it before, this is a multi-step process. First what we're going to do is set our fans to our desired speed that we'll be running in the field. Next, in our display, we're going to make sure that we have one tank enabled, that our half width disconnects are open and our other ones are shut. We'll grab a stopwatch and this works best if you have two people. With everything running, you can grab a stopwatch hit start at the same time you hit your hydraulic calibration switch and time how long it takes your product to get to your furthest outside runs. Then, once you have that time determined, you can reset the stopwatch, let go of the switch and see how long it takes for you to run out of product to your shortest runs which will be in your center. These are now your mechanical on and off times. It's best to do these three or four times and build an average as tenths of seconds do make a large difference. Now that we have our on and off times, we need to enter them into the display. Go to setup in the bottom left hand corner, equipment, air seater and cart, and scroll down to mechanical delays. And here we can enter our on and off times that we already set with our stopwatch. You can enter them for each tank. In a C-Series air cart, we also have to make sure that our inner and outer on and off times are set up properly. From selecting section command, our next page here, here we can enter in our mechanical times between our inner and outer. These need to be timed with the stopwatch and verified. Now that we have our basic mechanical on and off times entered in our display, we want to perform a scratch test. First, in our overlap settings, we want to make sure that everything is set to 100% overlap. Then we will perform our scratch test. We want to drive down the field with the GPS line with our tool on the ground and make sure that we have painted a coverage map. Then we can lift up and we're going to want to cross our scratch pad test with our tool just out of the ground, but make sure we are applying product so we can see it above. As we are crossing our scratch pad, we're going to notice chevron patterns of our seed and fertilizer turning on and off. This is due to our center section shutting off first and our outer wings getting product last. As we're performing this test, we want to do it multiple times to make sure we're getting adequate coverage. If we notice on our turn off, if we have a miss in our center, we need to decrease our turn off time. As well, on this side, if we notice that we have misses on both sides of our wings, we're going to need to increase our turn on time. Now, while traveling this way as well, we notice that we have a large overlap area here. We're going to want to increase our off time to bring our pattern out. I'm going this way. As well, if we notice if there's a bunch of extra covered area here, we're going to want to decrease our turn on time to push our pattern further out. The whole goal while we're setting mechanical on and off times is to make sure that our turn off time is right at the line in our center sections and our turn on time is right at the line with our turn on time on our outer wings. Once we have that set, we can then use our overlap settings to get the desired overlap coverage we're looking for. Okay, now that we have our mechanical turn on and turn off times, we can set our overlap control. 
as we add feet of overlap, it is going to add extra coverage for us. On our turn off, by adding feet, we will see our cells move in, and our turn on time, we will see us move out here. Once we are satisfied and have verified our times are correct, we can come into our menu, applications, section control, and in here, we can set our overlap settings for each tank. Your coverage of overlap, 100% overlap plus additional, you can enter how many feet of overlap you want. As well, you can do exterior and interior boundaries if you are using them.